Hello, beautiful, beautiful black people. I hope that all is well in your world. And this day, this day become a very, very successful day for you and all of your wonderful, wonderful loved ones. My beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters, flaunt your beauty. Flaunt your you are a entity of nature. All of these so-called human beings cannot say that. Black folks, highly melanated folks like me are an entity of nature. Just as the universe was created from darkness, out of blackness, we, highly melanated human beings, were created out of blackness, out of, out of darkness. We are, we have in us the most important substance of the universe. And that substance is called melanin. Do you know you will, won't hear white folks say that? The white scientists, the white doctors, the white researchers, they will not say that because they know that inside of their being, they do not have the most important substance of the universe. And that substance is called melanin. White folks do not have it. They pretend that they do. They will say that they do. But all you have to do to affirm that they do not is to look at their skin. Look at the pupils of their eyes and look at their skin. <clears throat> excuse me, and you will see. They do not have it. They do not have it. The bark of a tree has it. The soil of the earth has it. All things in the plant kingdom that is of nature has it. All things in the animal kingdom that is of nature has it. All things out there in the cosmos, in the cosmos, has it. My beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters, black folks, people that look like me, have that substance. That substance. It is part of our being. It is part of us. White folks are hybrids. White folks have an excess of recessive genes. Two more things to look at in order to determine whether white folks have within their being the most important substance of the universe. Look at their skin. Look at the pupils of their eyes. They have recessive genes. 
they have recessive genes. Just a few things for you to consider when you're trying to determine whether or not these non-black folks have the most important substance of the universe within them. We live in a society right here in America that acts as though some lives do not matter. We live in a society right here on this plantation called America where those folks act as though as though some lives do not matter. And that is why, that is why I say black lives matter. That is why we say black lives matter. And that is why we say, say her name, say his name, because black lives matter matter to white folks. Black lives matter too. We need to abolish we need to abolish these gutless cowardice punk ass white journalists. Every time you turn on the TV you are witnessing some event, some narrative that these gutless, cowardice, white journalists are reading, are saying, are elaborating on, etc., etc. They will always choose to say the word America instead of saying what they really mean is white America. They will always up to say America instead of white America. The Republicans, politicians, are good at that also. They will consistently say that they are for the American people. What they really mean is that they are for the white American people. A white journalist just recently, just recently, did a piece, did a story on the NBA, the National Basketball League's rating problems. And you do not have to read it, but in this piece, I believe his name is Ethan Scross, S-T-R-A-U-S-S, Ethan Scross. What he does in his piece is he scratches himself into knots. He contorts himself into knots to determine that the NBA very public embrace of Black Lives Matter has created a ratings problem. And the takeaway the takeaway from this is a very 
narrowly focused view. The takeaway from his piece is narrowly focused. The takeaway from Ethan Ross's piece is racist. For a myriad of reasons, including the been proven fact that the sort of Americans so bothered by the NBA's progressive branding and messaging, their support of Black Lives Matter, it is white folks who have a problem with that. It is not Americans, it is white Americans that have a problem with that. But Ethan Scross refused to say white Americans. Just like most white journalists, they will not say white Americans. When they talk about Trump supporters, they will say American supporters. They will not say white Americans, racist Trump supporters. It was kind of a weird narrative that this Ethan Strauss concocted. But I'm more interested in how he framed it when sharing it because it revealed a very fatal and gutless and editorially flawed linguistic tick, T-I-C. It is definitely a linguistic tick that so many, too damn many, white racist journalists and white racist pundits and white racist writers possess. And that, and that is referencing a vague and Amorphous, amorphous, A M O R P H O U S. America, the word America, when they clearly mean white America, they will always substitute the word America when they clearly mean white America. It is white America that has a problem with the NBA supporting Black Lives Matter. It is white America that has a problem supporting the NBA because of that. Of course, America is not the only, only word that exists for these white folks who are paid money to know what words mean. To say, to say white people, to say white people. They are paid money to know what words mean. To say white people. To say millennials, to say Christians, to say evangelists, to say red state voters, to say Rust Belt voters, to say suburbanites, to say soccer moms, 
That is a list. That is, that is a part of a list that is so long that you have to only give a few examples because there are so many coded terms that these white racist journalists use, like using America instead of white America. Using millennials instead of white folks in a specific age group. Christians instead of saying white Christians. Evangelists instead of saying white evangelists. Red state voters instead of saying Racist white folks in red states. Rust Belt voters instead of saying white folks. Suburbanites instead of saying white folks. Soccer moms instead of saying white moms. That's the kind of bullshit that you get from these racist white journalists. You get half-truths. You get omissions. You get lies. You get in your windows. And they skew the narratives to enhance white folks. That's what they do. The reason, the reason why this happens is simple. The reason is simple. White America are white Americans are to these journalists the baseline Americans. These racist white journalists say white America, they think white Americans are the baseline Americans. The white Americans are the standard issue, issue Americans. White Americans are the American S Americans to these white racist journalists. To them, white folks and Americans are as interchangeable as Clorox and bleach. People who are not white are the ones who require a qualifier, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. It's just bad writing. It is bad writings by these racist white journalists. Reporting is bad reporting. It is bad thinking. Imagine for an instance, that instead of naming the NBA, Ethan Scross referred to it as a professional basketball league. On a professional basketball league, losing America. Losing America. When he should have said, the NBA is losing America. White America. That's kind of goofy, isn't it? Sometimes you might wonder why does these racist white journalists contort themselves into knots? For example, Ethan Scross. When all he had to do was to say, NBA. It's like going to Wendy's. Going to the Wendy's fast food store and asking for a burger. Refusing to name white folks is just as goofy and weird and dumb 
as going to Wendy's and just asking for a burger. And just think how much better and how much heavier and more precise these white boys' work would be if they perform the radical act of literally just naming the thing they are actually talking about. These racist white journalists fail us every day. They will not tell us the truth. They will not tell us the truth. Hence is why I have always said, and I still say today, that anything produced, written, presented, narrated by white folks will always especially if it's regarding black folks. If it's regarding black folks, it will always be filled with lies, omissions, half-truths, innuendos, and it will, it will always be skewed to enhance white folks and to enhance white supremacy. That's all I have on this.